What is up guys, today we'll be comparing the Galaxy S20 Fan Edition versus the LG V60. Both of these phones are in the $600 price range, I will put the links down below. You can pick the V60 up in the used or refurbished market for a little bit cheaper, around $500. The dual screen case will cost you an extra $100, which will turn this phone into a just powerful multitasking and gaming beast. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with the hardware. So um, they went with plastic on the S20 and uh, yeah on this one and it does not feel like super light and cheap but it definitely does not feel as premium as the uh, V60 here for sure that is uh, you know glass and metal here. Uh, the V60 is definitely much bigger as you can see if you can see that and it's a little bit thicker. Uh, than the S20 uh, as well and but like I said it does feel a little bit uh, more premium for sure I guess the benefits with this uh, plastic is that you don't see a whole bunch of smudges and fingerprints it's kind of like a kind of a matte plastic it's not soft and uh, yeah so I like it some people won't but uh, it really comes down to your personal preference if you really care about that um, also just to go around both phones got the power button on the v60 power button volume rocker s20 you have a google assistant button as well there is no big speed button on the s20 or anything like that uh, volume rockers are over here and usb type c stereo speakers on both of these phones and also you have the headphone jack 3.5 millimeter jack with the quad DAC on the V60 audio lovers this is a must uh, you know it's hands down if you're just in the audio you're automatically going with the V60 uh, you do not have a headphone jack on the S20 of course they want you to get the wireless headphones which are not you know it's not terrible but if you're really into audio you're gonna want to use the quad DAC with the wired headphones to get the best experience and as far as the camera modules they both have you know a little bit of raise to them I think the S20 has a little bit more raise so they're both gonna kinda bounce a little bit well the V60 is really not bouncing at all yeah, it doesn't really bounce at all as much as the S20 does now the V60 well the V50 was completely flat so they had you know brought this design back but I really love that clean design of the V50 but they both look really good but you do get a little bit more bounce on the S20 plus for sure alright so both of these phones are IP68 dust and water resistant uh, which is great uh, so let's go ahead and talk about the displays here so this really comes down to personal preference uh, which one you prefer I think they're both great displays but they cater towards a certain type of person uh, so on the S20 you have a super AMOLED display it's 120 Hertz the 6.5 inch uh, 1080p panel 407 for the PPI on the V60 you have a massive uh, P OLED display it's a 6.8 inch display and again it's a 1080p display 395 uh, for the PPI both displays look really good now the market usually goes towards the super AMOLED displays uh, I like them as well they give off some really deep blacks but uh, this OLED display looks really really good it looks very close very similar to uh, the AMOLED display so I really don't have any issues uh, with it they both look great give off deep blacks very vibrant colors and also you do have the punch hole and I guess slightly slimmer bezels on the S20 but it's not by much and you do have the water drop notch now I prefer the uh, punch hole because it's smaller and it gives off a more immersive uh, feel uh, but again if you're into displays you just have a massive massive display so when you're just watching uh, movies or whatever, uh, the V60 is just going to stand out. It's really, really a nice experience to just have such a massive display. Now, again, if you don't like big displays, then you're going to hate this phone. So uh, remember that. Don't get this phone if you, you know, just don't want a massive phone. It's almost kind of like a mini tablet like kind of experience, uh, which is pretty cool. So yeah, so that is what it really comes down to. It's just personal preference. Now, the 120 hertz you don't have that on the v60 it's a 60 hertz display and will you notice it yes uh, when you're just scrolling through applications also if you play a game that supports 120 hertz you will notice that as well 
and uh, you just notice it with the animations the V60 is not uh, laggy or anything at all it's just once you try anything with 90 Hertz or 120 Hertz you will notice that smoothness now it's not a to die for uh, feature most people normal people don't care about it so again it really comes down to what you're looking for now both these phones have stereo speakers so I have them both at max volume let's see which one sounds uh, the best or sounds louder That was the S20. Alright, so immediately the V60 is just loud. That's what I thought. The V60 is just like, I think it's one of the loudest speakers that I have personally uh, tested. I'm not going to say out of every smartphone, but this thing, this thing is so loud and it keeps uh, the detail and the sound without distorting and everything. It's just really nice. Yeah, there's just more of a bass presence on the V60. You can hear the 808s a little bit clearer. Uh, so definitely the V60 has the uh, one up on the S20 speaker here. Uh, they're both good speakers. If you're in a loud environment, you will 100% be able to hear these speakers, uh, no problem. All right, so both of these phones run Android 10. You have more of a stock version of Android on uh, the V60, and you have one UI skin on the S20. Uh, basically, it comes down to do you like a lot of customization on your phone, a lot of little extra stuff, because you have a ton of that on Samsung uh, devices. You have the Samsung Deck support, uh, which you can pretty much turn your phone into like a desktop on the TV or on your computer. You also have secured folders on here, the edge light, and you have a bunch of little stuff. Samsung kits, there's a ton of stuff. The Samsung um, edge panel right here where I can bring up like two multitasking applications. There is a lot of like little, little neat stuff in the One UI. Uh, now, what I don't like is that they don't have Google Now on One UI. Uh, which is something that I really love on the V60. It's really awesome um, just to have that information. I use it a lot, actually. So every time I get a phone that does not have it, I kind of, I'm like, uh. But um, again, you have those features on the V60, like built-in screen recorder. You have that on the uh, One UI as well. You also have uh, the screen sharing on the V60, which is a nice feature to have. And again, you have the quad DAC on here, which it's just again I've already went over that it's just an awesome feature to have if you're really into uh, sound and stuff like that uh, so it really comes down to personal preference do you want the more cleaner stock version of Android or do you want Samsung's uh, version of Android they're both really smooth gestures and everything work uh, fine so I have no issues with that uh, so it really just comes down to personal preference again here alright so on the FE 2020, this is the Exynos version. We have the Exynos 990 and Mali G77. Micro SD support, 128 gigs of storage and 6 gigs of RAM. On the V60, we have the Snapdragon 865, Adreno 650, micro SD support, 128 gigs of storage and 8 gigs of RAM. So we're going to run a Geekbench test so I can see like the difference between these two uh, processors. But let's go ahead and do a quick real speed test and see what the big difference is. If there's a huge difference, start with Instagram. Look like oh that was a tie. Subway Surfer. Xenos, I mean uh Snapdragon version got it there. YouTube. Snapdragon got it there. PUBG. So most people usually prefer the Snapdragon version. Um, I do most definitely. As you can see, it's just a tad bit faster than the Xenos version. And we're already in. And uh, let's go ahead, check out the graphics settings and stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and check out the graphics. 
boom you can see we're on okay so we have HDR extreme frame rates and we have HDR ultra so as you can see the Snapdragon 865 is just going to be a more powerful chip so if you want the you know best gaming experience then you would go with the Snapdragon version of this phone and not the Xenos version of this phone let's go ahead and just load into a game So they both look great and both playable. There's nothing really wrong. But like I said, if you're really into gaming, then you would obviously go with the Snapdragon version. But they both look great. You will notice like the frame rate is definitely a little smoother because you have that extreme frame rate instead of ultra. So you will notice that. Let's go ahead and check out the Geekbench score. Alright, so you can see big score difference on these Geekbench scores, as you can see on the single core and the multi-core score. Uh, so again, in real life performance, it's not going to be a huge difference. You're not going to notice a big difference. But when it comes down to having that extra juice for gaming and stuff like that, uh, that is something that you're going to notice. So, Alright, so both of these phones have NFC for mobile payments, and they also both have an in-display fingerprint scanner. So as you can see, let's see which one is smoother or works faster. So they're both actually pretty fast. I've never had an issue with both of these. Uh, what's strange is that the V60 does not have face unlock, which is weird. You do have it on the S20. Yeah, so they both work 100% of the time. I've never really had an issue uh, with either one. They work really well. But if you want that option for face unlock, you don't have it on the V64. Uh, you know, whatever reason. I'm not sure why. Let's go ahead and talk about the camera. So with the S20, you have a 12 megapixel wide, an 8 megapixel telephoto lens, and a 12 megapixel ultra wide, 4K, 30, or 60 FPS. You also have a 32 megapixel selfie camera uh, that also shoots in 4K, 30, or 60 FPS. On the V60, you have a 64 uh, megapixel standard, a 13 megapixel ultra wide, and then you have a 0.3 TOF uh, depth sensor on here. You also have 8K video, which is really crazy. I haven't been able to really look at it on the computer because my computer <laughs> won't play it, it'll just crash. But um, yeah, the 8K video on the V60, that's a crazy uh, feature to have. Uh, you do have a 10 megapixel selfie camera that also shoots 4K uh, video. Uh, so basically both these phones have really great cameras you're getting really two uh, different kind of styles uh, so on the Galaxy S20 it gives you like a really oversaturated kind of punchy look uh, which a lot of people like because a lot of people like Samsung cameras uh, what LG does is they give you a really realistic look uh, which I kind of like so it, I really jump back and forth between it sometimes I like the oversaturated look and sometimes I just like the more realistic look uh, Samsung does have like a kind of thing where they kind of over sharpen and kind of make things look like more lifelike or more like super like real it's kind of hard to explain um, but uh, yeah, so you do have a little bit more detail. Uh, I noticed with photos, especially when you put them on the computer, you'll notice uh, a little bit more detail uh, on the S20 uh, FE. Um, but overall, these photos are really good, very high detail. Like I said, I love the color accuracy on the V60. And also, the front facing camera is pretty good on both of these phones. It again comes down to that color accuracy was the main thing that I noticed if you want that more kind of vibrant color or more realistic color. Um, also, uh, video on here are pretty good. Um, they take a, really the same video to me from what I've seen. I didn't see like a huge difference in terms of video quality. Now, when you put the uh, V60 in 8K, you will notice uh, definitely a little bit more uh, detail when you put it on a uh, computer. Uh, but you have really good video. You have uh, really good manual settings on both of these phones, especially on the V60 as well. So if you want to take advantage of that to get the best shot possible. But two great camera phones you really can't go uh, wrong with. It really comes down to personal style.
Now let's go ahead and talk about battery life. So we have a 4,500 milliamp battery on the S20 fast charging and you also have fast wireless charging and reverse wireless charging which means that I can charge the V60 with the S20 which is a really nice feature to have to share your battery life if I could find it wireless power share well, I have to have over 30 percent uh, but basically you would just I showed it in the unboxing if you really want to see it uh, but you would just shut your phone down and place it like that and it would charge uh, no problem so um, yeah that's a really cool feature to have but as far as battery life um, the 5000 milliamp battery on the V60 you also have wireless charging of as well of course but this V60 is super super hard to kill on a full charge it is really really crazy uh, you can easily go like two days no problem with this phone that's if you are not on 5G if you're not on 5G um, you can get that really amazing battery life. If you are on 5G and you have the dual screen case, uh, you're really going to be around like five to six hours of screen on time, which is still, you know, pretty decent in my opinion. Um, but yeah, so it really depends on that. Also, again, if you pay the extra hundred dollars for the dual screen case, it will turn this phone into a multitasking beast. Uh, so you will be able to do a lot uh, with that case as far as being a power user. Uh, so that's pretty much it guys I think these are two very well matched phones I think they have a lot of give and take from both of them again it really comes down to the pros and cons of both uh, so what do you guys think which one would you go with and I'll catch you guys in the next one